the Bodhisattva's friendliness and compassion. That son or daughter of a good family, who, as a Bodhisattva, even for one single day, remains attentive to the perfection of wisdom, begets a great heap of merit. For, as he or she goes on dwelling day and night in those mental activities, he becomes more and more worthy of the gifts bestowed on him by all beings, because no other being has a mind so full of friendliness as he has, except for the Buddhas, the Lords. And the Tathagatas, of course, are matchless, unequaled, endowed with inconceivable dharmas. How then does that son or daughter of good family at first aspire to that merit? He becomes endowed with that kind of wise insight which allows him to see all beings as on the way to their slaughter. Great compassion thereby takes hold of him. With his heavenly eye he surveys countless beings, and what he sees fills him with great agitation. So many carry the burden of a karma which will soon be punished in the hells. Others have acquired unfortunate rebirths which keep them away from the Buddha and his teachings. Others are doomed soon to be killed, or they are enveloped in the net of false views, or fail to find the path, while others who had gained a rebirth favorable to their emancipation have lost it again. And he radiates great friendliness and compassion over all those beings, and gives his attention to them, thinking, I shall become a savior to all those beings. I shall release them from all their sufferings. But he does not make either this or anything else into a sign with which he becomes intimate. This also is the great light of a bodhisattva's wisdom, which allows him or her to know full enlightenment. For when they dwell in this dwelling, bodhisattvas become worthy of the gifts of the whole world, and yet they do not turn back on full enlightenment. When their thoughts are well supported by perfect wisdom, and when they are near to all knowledge, then they purify the gifts of those who give them the requisites of life. Therefore a bodhisattva should dwell in this mental work associated with perfect wisdom, if he does not wish to consume his alms fruitlessly, if he wants to point out the path to all beings, to shed light over a wide range, to set free from birth and death all the beings who are subject to it, and to cleanse the organs of vision of all beings.